You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. News 25 is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law, voted best of Las Vegas. Give them a call, 702-727-9900. News 25 is also brought to you by Desert View Hospital. You can count on us. Hi, good evening, Nevada. It's Wednesday, May 24th, 2023. I'm John Kohler reporting to you from the KPVM News 25 studios. This is News 25. And the queen of rock and roll died peacefully today at the age of 83, Tina Turner, after a long illness in her home in Switzerland. Her family said in a statement Wednesday with her, the world loses a musical legend and a role model. Mike Rohan has the story. The queen of rock and roll, Tina Turner, who left a hard scrabble farming community and abusive relationship to become one of the top recording artists of all time, died on Wednesday at the age of 83. Turner was born Anna Mae Bullock on November 26, 1939, in the rural Tennessee community of Nutbush. She was part of the American musical duo husband and wife Ike and Tina Turner in the 60s and 70s. In the 1980s, Turner launched one of the greatest comebacks in music history. Her 1984 multi-platinum album Private Dancer contained the hit song What's Love Got To Do With It, which won the Grammy Award for Record of the Year and became her first and only number one song on the Billboard Hot 100. Having sold over 100 million records worldwide, Turner was one of the best-selling recording artists of all time. Turner passed away following a long illness on May 24, 2023 at the age of 83 in Kuesnicht, Switzerland. Knight County Sheriff's Office deputies were dispatched to an alleged domestic dispute that resulted in the residents becoming trashed. RJ has the story. On May 22nd, Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies were dispatched in response to a report of an alleged domestic dispute. The reporting party, a juvenile, stated that George Ferlin was allegedly being aggressive and throwing things in the residence. Upon arrival, officers spoke with a witness who stated that Ferlin allegedly left prior to officers' arrival via bicycle. Another witness spoke to officers stating they had woken up when Ferlin allegedly started yelling at the witness about a Sawzall, a reciprocating saw, and blamed the witness for taking the tools. The witness stated that the tool was probably moved as they and the kids were cleaning the residence the day prior. According to the declaration of arrest, Ferlin allegedly started to throw random objects in the house as they continued to get mad. Ferlin allegedly threw a table at the witness, which struck the right side of their jaw. Ferlin's alleged aggressive behavior lasted approximately 20 minutes before the witness told the juvenile to call the cops. Upon hearing this, Furland allegedly began making threats. While a witness was walking towards the back of the RV, Furland allegedly kicked a table at them, which missed them, but allegedly broke the bathroom. Officers stated they had observed the rear door of the residence to be broken off of its hinges, with only a small piece still intact. Officers also stated that they had allegedly observed no distinguishable markings or injuries on the witness's jaw, but allegedly saw two quarter-sized bruises on their upper left arm. When asked by officers, the witness stated one was allegedly from that day's incident, but the other was from an incident the day prior when Furland allegedly hit them. The witness denied any medical attention, but did want to file a temporary protective order, but had no way of going to the court as they didn't have a phone or vehicle. Officers spoke to more witnesses after, one of which stated that they allegedly saw Furland break one of the cell phones and a flower pot. They also stated that when they were told to call police, Ferlin allegedly blocked them from leaving the front door. The witness then stated they allegedly opened a window, put a pillow over the edge, and climbed out. The witness stated they went to multiple nearby residences before finding one that would open the door to them so that they could call 911. Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies patrolled the area due to Ferlin having allegedly fled the scene, but were unable to locate him until later on in the day. George Ferlin was then arrested and booked into the Nye County Detention Center under the charges of domestic battery and child abuse or neglect. The Nye County Sheriff's Office uh, arrested a man allegedly attempting to break into a resident's home after hearing loud music. RJ has more. 
On May 16th, Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies were dispatched due to a report of an alleged home invasion. Upon arrival, officers made contact with a witness who stated that Donald Grip was allegedly having an episode where they were extremely agitated for no apparent reason. According to the declaration of arrest, Donald, without provocation, allegedly came to the witness's house, went to the back door, and allegedly banged on it multiple times while screaming obscenities. The witness then went to make sure all their doors were locked as they believed Donald was going to attempt breaking in. Donald allegedly then went to the front of the residence and then violently opened the screen door, entered the covered porch, and violently attempted to open the front door. While allegedly opening the screen door, he allegedly broke a vase as well that sat on the front porch. According to the declaration of arrest, Donald allegedly has had multiple past incidents where they have become extremely agitated, banging on the doors of his own residence while screaming obscenities. Officers then spoke to Donald, who allegedly stated that they heard loud music coming from the witness's residence, and and, as the declaration of arrest states, went crazy. Donald then allegedly corroborated the witness's statements and admitted to breaking the vase. When asked to elaborate on what Donald meant by going crazy, he allegedly stated that he didn't know what he was doing. Another witness of Donald's residence stated that Donald was having an episode and heard him screaming obscenities. Donald Grip was then arrested and booked into the Nye County Detention Center and charged with attempted home invasion. There was a Medicare by AMA grand opening earlier today. News 25 caught up with the CEO at the event. Our Medicare agency is a local agency here in Pahrump on Basin Avenue, and we're here for all of um, the local Medicare beneficiaries here that are going to have questions about their Medicare coverage, what plans are available, but also things change every year. So we're here to help and educate uh, those Medicare beneficiaries, maybe people that are turning 65, maybe people that are leaving employer coverage or those that are on Medicare and have further questions, but also how to use some of the products and uh, some of the benefits that they have on their plans. So we're here, we advise, we represent all of the different carriers located here in Nye County. Uh, we work with the local uh, medical groups and doctor's offices as well. And uh, we can help you find a provider. We can help you find a plan that fits your needs and your budget. So uh, we're here to help you. Uh, we are open uh, here on Basin Avenue. We're actually at 1017 Basin Avenue here in Pahrump. And uh, we're open six days a week. We're open 9 a.m. till 4 p.m. Monday to Friday and uh, 10 a.m. till 3 p.m. every single Saturday here as well. You can either drop by our store here on Basin Avenue. We're opposite Petrap Park, so um, I'm sure a lot of you know where that is, so please stop by. Um, also, you can call us directly on our number here. As you can see, it's 775-710-3001, or our website is uh, medicarebyama.com. When News 25 returns, word on a story from the College of Southern Nevada. Come on back. You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. This segment of the news is brought to you by John Air. For all your heating and air conditioning needs, call 775-751-2372. Welcome back to News 25. I'm John Kohler. The College of Southern Nevada recently held their graduation ceremony. News anchor and reporter Unet Gentry has the story. Join us in celebrating the College of Southern Nevada's 51st graduation ceremony and this year's unofficial theme, duality. Because of CSN's dual commencement ceremonies this year, one at 10 a.m. and the other at 5 p.m. The other noteworthy reason, the dual enrollment of 18-year-old student commencement speaker Aaron Chalet Garcia Agbalai, who amazingly graduates from college at CSN before she even graduates from high school. And it's all thanks to CSN's dual enrollment program and CSN High School, which allows high school students to take college credit courses. Aaron 
Karen cherishes her dual enrollment experience and encourages other students to take advantage of the great educational opportunity. A lot of our classes were very one-on-one, -on -one, very close classroom, very um, everyone was knew each other. Um, a lot of a lot of our classes were super fun, super a um, lot different than what I experienced at my other high school, but it was a lot of fun, and I hope that in the future, a lot more dual enrollment students will come in, I hope. Erin also says she got invaluable help rehearsing her graduation speech from CSN communication professor Chelsea Walls and Vice President of Academic Affairs, Dr. James McCoy, who also gave noteworthy remarks at graduation. Other noteworthy commencement speakers include CSN President, Dr. Federico Zaragoza, and Nevada Secretary of State, Francisco Aguilar, who gave the keynote address. Erin says she's happy she decided to enter a competition to be CSN commencement speaker and was selected. It was definitely very nerve-wracking, but I had a lot of support from a lot of um, faculty and a lot of my friends and family. Um, it was definitely an experience that I've never had before, and I hope that I will have again. <laughs> Both of CSN's commencement celebrations were successful, and CSN President Dr. Federico Zaragoza says this year's is one of the largest graduating classes in CSN history, with more than 3,800 CSN diplomas awarded and 141 bachelor's degrees, another CSN record. Erin is a high school senior who is getting her high school diploma nearly a week after getting her associate's degree from CSN. And keeping with the theme of duality, I'm also happily doing double duty, serving as CSN communication and journalism instructor and KPVM News 25 anchor reporter. This is Unette Gentry reporting from the College of Southern Nevada's graduation ceremony. Megabus has announced their new service from Las Vegas to Los Angeles. Mikey has the details. On Monday, Megabus announced that it is launching a new service between Los Angeles and Las Vegas. According to a news release, due to an increase in demand for travel, Megabus will now offer four trips daily between Los Angeles and Las Vegas. The company says it will also have additional travel options available to Barstow and Riverside as well. The new service between Los Angeles and Las Vegas begins on June 1st, according to Megabus. For more information, you can visit us.megabus.com. Tonopah is holding their annual Jim Butler Days with all kinds of fun events. Jim Butler Days is going on now in the town of Tonopah. Jim Butler was camping around Tonopah Springs in the spring of 1900 when his burrow wandered off. While chasing it, Jim picked up a rock to throw at it and discovered some promising looking ore. He continued his journey and showed the samples to others who showed little interest. After returning to his home in Belmont, Butler told a young attorney named Tasker Odie about his discovery. Tasker had a friend who taught chemistry in Austin and he enlisted the teacher's help in essaying the sample. The ore valued at more than $200 a ton. History tells us that the mines in the Tonopah district produced an excess of 5 million tons of ore. At today's market, the precious metals would be valued in excess $1,200,000,000. Jim Butler Days will feature a meet and greet with award-winning author Jackie Bohr on Friday, May 26th and Saturday, May 27th. The Jim Butler Stampede is on Sunday, May 28th at the Tonopah Rodeo Grounds and a free concert to Dave Stamey on Sunday, May 28th at the Tonopah Convention Center. It will also feature the Nevada State Mining Championships on Saturday, May 27th. For more information, visit jimbutlerdays.com. When News 25 returns, we've got all your sporting news. Come on back. You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. News 25 is brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 
Welcome back to News 25 with your sporting news, Mikey. Time now for your Channel 25 look at sports. Stanley Cup playoffs quest for the West. Game 3 last night in Dallas. Aiden Hill with the 4-0 shutout against the Stars. Game 4 tomorrow night at 5 p.m. from American Airlines Center in Dallas. Las Vegas Aviators in Tacoma all week long taking on the Rainers. Last night they were on the short end of the stick. Rainers won 5-4. They play this evening at 6.05. The 2022 WNBA champions, the Las Vegas Aces, had their home opener this Saturday, May 27th at 6 p.m. at Michelob Ultra Arena. They play the Los Angeles Sparks, and they'll be receiving their championship rings as well. Pahrump Valley High School Junior Varsity and Varsity Baseball will have their awards night on Thursday, June 1st, inside the Pahrump Valley High School Auditorium. And that's your look at sports on News 25. Did you know that this Friday before Memorial Day is known as Don't Friday? Now, it's meant to raise awareness about the dangers of sunburns, ultraviolet radiation, and overexposure to the sun. Dr. Shul P. Caterpaul, a dermatologist with the Cleveland Clinic, says sunburn can cause skin, uh, skin cancer, and some people are at higher risk than others. Those with fair skin are most likely to develop sun, skin cancer in their lifetime. So, um, you know, we, we say fair skin. So if you have like red or blonde hair, light eye, someone that freckles easily, if you've had, you know, sunburns in your lifetime, those are all risk factors that, um, you know, will contribute to your, to how likely you are to develop skin cancer. To avoid sunburn, check the UV index before venturing outside and avoid being out when the sun is hottest between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. When outdoors, wear sun protective clothing, a hat, and a good sunscreen. A broad spectrum sunscreen of 30 SPF or higher is recommended and be sure to apply enough. One ounce is needed to cover the entire body. Sunscreen should be applied 30 minutes prior to going out and every two hours afterward. And remember, you can even get sunburnt through windows or on a cloudy day. A typical sunburn may feel warm, itchy, or tender to the touch. It should flake or peel within a few days and heal in about a week. The skin is going to be very fragile because you've actually damaged a layer of skin. So, you know, making sure you avoid anything irritating, any like anti-aging, anti-acne products, avoid those. You really want to be gentle, so gentle cleanser and try and rebuild that barrier. Sunburned skin be treated with uh, aloe vera jelly or petroleum jelly. Acetaminophen or ibuprofen can also be taken for discomfort. However, if the sunburn is really bad and blisters develop on a large portion of your, sick, uh, of your skin, see a dermatologist for additional care. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Lerner and Rowe Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Well, let's take a look at this afternoon. Oh, well, look at this. A lot of wind kind of blowing at us from here and there. Sunshiny day, though, and uh, beautiful warm weather overall. Not too bad. We'll have a complete weather report when we return. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hi, good evening, Nevada. I'm Mike Ruhan from the Channel 25 weather studios and worldwide on the local BTV app. The app you need, it's free. Who doesn't love free stuff? Fernley. Saw 72 degrees, Fallon 73, Carson City, and Tonopah, and Fernley. We can call them cute little weather triplets at 72. 76 in Goldfield, Beatty saw 86 degrees. Amargosa, 92 degrees, Vegas, 95. And in Death Valley, triple digits once again, 104. But here in the paradise of Pahrump, let's take a look. Our current temperature is 88 degrees. We saw 89 just a little bit earlier. Winds out of the south-southwest at 17 miles per hour. Wind gusts. We're pretty, pretty high today. Sun rose this morning at 531, setting this evening at 750 under clear skies. Beautiful star watching, going down to a low of 61 degrees. Humidity at 22%. How does that set us up for the rest of the week? Let's take a look. Sunshine, a lot of sunshine, but a few clouds. We got 
Mostly sunny conditions tomorrow, 88 degrees, 85 on Friday. The weekend looks gorgeous, a couple of 88 degrees. Winds kind of ratcheting out at 15 miles per hour, but we stay under that pretty much all week. So I would make plans for a beautiful weekend because it's going to be gorgeous. And back to the desk. Wow, working extra hard today, Mike, uh, doing sports and weather. Amazing guy. Good job. Uh, I guess that's our news for Channel 25 this evening. I would like to add a little personal news. Uh, my wife and I just uh, brought two new puppies into the world, and they look like this. They're the cutest. Oh, my goodness. They're French Bulldogs. And uh, uh, two boys, so we did real good uh, with our girl, Gracie. So congratulations to us. Congratulations to America. Two new dogs. Great job. <laughs> that's News 25. Good night.